Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about a major change to the Godot engine, specifically the physics side of that engine, and that change is all about something called Jolt Physics. Now, you may have heard of Jolt Physics before, especially if you're a regular this channel. I did a coverage of Jolt Physics in the past. This is an open source rigid body physics and collision detection library. Uh, it was made by the guy behind Horizons Forbidden West Physics. It's been used for other engines as well. Uh, Wicked Engine uses it. A few others like that use it as well. Then on top of that, um, it also was used for X4 Foundation and a number of other games out there. It's a full featured physics system. In terms of the features and functionality, you get an idea of it. I'll just quickly, you know, just scan over uh, the entries here. So you get an idea. It can do quite a bit. It's got um, vehicle physics, soft body simulations, so on, and it runs on a number of different platforms, including, interestingly enough, consoles, which is always a nice thing. So this is an MIT licensed project, and you may be thinking, well, it's already available in Godot, and you are 100% right. Godot Jolt is a thing, and Godot Jolt is basically a, I believe it's a GD extension of um, an implementation, a drop-in implementation of the Jolt physics engine in Godot. Basically, it works with all of the existing Godot physics nodes, it just uses Jolt instead. Now that's actually not what we we're talking about today. We're talking more about this part here, and that's here. Uh, so it is now integrated into Godot itself as a module. So this is directly part of the engine itself. It's no longer required to install it as an extension. Uh, so uh, they worked with, is sponsored by W4 Games to go ahead and basically integrate this module into the Godot engine itself. So details about it there. There are a couple of areas where it performs a little bit different, but it was designed to be a drop in replacement. Now, one thing you're going to find though, is it doesn't fully do everything that Jolt does. So it does things better than Godot physics. So I'm going to show you a very hands-on illustrative example of why um, Jolt is just better than Godot physics in most cases. So a lot of times it resolves better, like so the physics simulation it comes up with is better, but it also performs better, which we're going to see in a second. But yeah, it is now built in. Although if you want to go ahead and check this out, you are going to need to either wait for the next uh, dev release, dev 7 I think this will be in, or you build it from code, which is what I have done today. Now, uh, another important part, and this is actually a huge development here. So uh, with uh, Godot 4.4, Dev 7, I'm assuming, uh, it's going to be built in as a module, but they recently launched their priorities list. The Godot engine has a priority section now, and we come on down here and check out their physics section right here. Uh, this is the key part. So they're going to integrate Joel as the default 3D physics engine. So uh, this is going to be uh, implemented uh, in there and they're also going to have it, uh, this part is probably more important. So as much as our nodes are made to be compatible with multiple physics engines, the existing integration of Jolt via the Godot Jolt add-on, which is now also now again built in as a module, is not optimal as there are numerous features that we can't be implemented in Godot due to the current way the system works. In addition to integrating Jolt as the default 3D physics system, we want to modernize our node bindings in order to fully exploit the new libraries. Remember when I said earlier on that Jolt had capabilities that Godot can't use? Well, those are going to be coming as well. So going forward, uh, we're going to have Jolt be the default physics engine inside of the Godot game engine. And even cooler, uh, it is actually going to get new features so that it's going to fully support all of the stuff that Jolt does. By the way, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using this. Now, uh, specifically, there is a physics example in here. This is from GD Quest. They did a number of demos to showcase features. This is an MIT licensed uh, collection of Godot projects that you can run. And we will go ahead. As I said earlier on, you do have to build it from code or wait for Dev 7 release. So here is my version built from code. And what you're going to find, let's open up this project right here. And let me go back down here and all right, so back over here, going to Godot. Oh, I've got two of them open. Okay, one sec. Opening two of the same project is rarely a good idea. So let's just shut them both down, start it from scratch. Okay, so here we go. This is that project. If you come on down here, you're going to find a 3D balls pool section. And we're going to open up 3D balls pool.tscm. So this is the example we are working with. Uh, basically, we're going to have a bunch of physical balls that drop into this cauldron that has a slider in place. Uh, and eventually, the balls fall out of the slider down into this tube, down into the world where they are destroyed eventually. So a really kind of cool example showing, uh, showing off physics capabilities. And right now, we come up here, project, project settings. 
we go down to physics, and we go in physics, go to the 3D section, you're going to notice the physics engine is currently the Godot physics 3D category. So let's go ahead and run this particular scene. All right, so here we go. Uh, so as I hold the mouse down, let me just maximize this window. Uh, look at the frames per second up here, hold the mouse down, and those frames per second are going to be a little bit lower than what I was seeing before, simply because uh, I have video capture going. So any blurb you see like that, ignore it. What we're going to look for is when it stops being a, a pretty consistent 60 frames per second. So any spike down you see, ignore it. That's because it's being video captured. Without video capture running, I was getting probably around 1,200 balls uh, before the physics engine started to clog things down. All right, so let's just keep this going, and uh, we're going to see the, the breakdown soon. So there you go. So now we're starting to see a pretty massive drop-off and now we're going into useless territory. Now it's going to climb back up because as these fall out of the world, the simulation recovers. It's got less to work with, but you're looking at about a thousand items before it starts to choke. And definitely it does choke. Again, that is lower than normal um, if I wasn't video capturing, but it does give you an idea of exactly what we're dealing with. So now what we're going to do is take the exact same thing uh, and let's go physics settings. Uh, 3D physics, and we'll change Jolt, no, sorry, Godot physics to Jolt physics. So this is the new physics simulation, save and restart. Now, other people have told me also that Jolt uh, just gives a more consistent and better physics simulation. So today, though, we're just looking at the performance ramifications. All right, so here we are in the same project. Now, sadly, it's going to take a little bit more to choke it. Not a ton more, but it's definitely going to take a bit more. So what I'm going to just do is... Um, We'll just uh, let's take this code and three exit. So basically, when we hold down the mouse, we're going to spawn three balls instead of just one. Pretty straightforward, small fix here, just to make things go a little faster for the demo. So let's head on back over here. Here is the project. We are now using Jolt Physics, a drop-in replacement. So otherwise, this entire project that you saw here with the static body 3D and the, the physics objects in place and the balls and so on, it was all set up to use the existing Godot Physics. So all we've done is dropped in this new version that is now available as a module, and we'll go ahead and run this particular demo. All right, so here we go. We'll go back to full screen. So we'll get rid of that little spike as we change. And now let's watch the ball count as we go. So obviously this is going to happen faster because we're spawning more balls. But there we go. So we're around the, uh, this is the point Godot choked out before, right? And we're, we're maxing, we're still hitting 60 frames per second. So now let's go up. So now we're sitting around 1,860 frames per second. All right, let's keep going. And... 2,300, 2,400, 2,500, 2,600, 2,700. All right, there we go. It's 3,000. Around 3,000, we start to fall off, but we don't fall off anywhere near as fast. So let's just add a couple more. And we're, we're still, it's still workable. It's not great, but definitely seeing the, but we didn't drop down to eight frames per second kind of territory until we get more up around the 4,000 territory. So as you can see here, literally just dropping Jolt in to replace Godot physics, you're getting a two to three time performance increase. That's insane. So that is two to three times more physics objects that you could put in your scene uh, before the performance ramifications start to really hit. That is reason enough to upgrade to Jolt, in my humble opinion, at the very least. So it is very cool, not only that Jolt is now going to be part of Godot, starting with Godot 4.4 Dev 7, I believe. So hopefully this will make it into the Godot 4.4 beta and then final release. Uh, and then all you're going to need to do is come on in once again. You go, actually, you won't have to do any of this because when you come in here, project settings, and you go to physics, 3D, what you'll notice here is there is this uh, drop down here and there's a default. Now, right now, when you pick default, it's the exact same as picking this. But in the future, default is actually going to be this. Now, I don't know if they're going to change the default behavior in Godot 4.4, but anyways, with Godot 4.4, this is going to be available out of the box. You're no longer going to need to add it as an extension, which is lovely. Uh, and I think for like 99.99% of people, you're going to be better off using Jolt Physics than you are using the Godot built-in physics system. You're going to get, again, what we saw here, a very simple example, but not one that I created or cherry-picked. This is one that already existed, and we saw a two to three times performance increase. That is 
massive. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the good news around Godot Jolt Physics. And then even better news, once again, in the priorities, they are going to start implementing all of those other features that are available in Jolt into Godot. So Godot should just simply get better physics support. Uh, and yeah, that's it. And the nice thing is they're also moving away from a, a NIMBY situation and not invented here. So it's lovely to see, oh, sorry, I guess NIMBY is not in my backyard, uh, but they're moving away from the, the not invented here syndrome. And sometimes when you've got a good open source library that does the trick, you should just rely on it. And that's what they're doing here. So let me know what you think. Jolt Physics. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.